Hey there, Taurus. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to February. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So please keep in mind, you guys, that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Just like last month, we are going to be keeping with the same format of splitting the reading, the session into two different parts. The first part is where we are going to speak directly to Taurus rising. And from that point of view, we are using sidereal astrology, not tropical or mainstream astrology. Quick sidebar, there's some work happening in the background. You guys might hear some of it. Hopefully you don't hear too much. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Hopefully the music helps to cover that up. If you like the music, check at, check the description box below. Um, there's a link to it. It's called Lo-Fi Girl. It is a channel here on YouTube. Great channel. I listen to it all the time, even when I'm not channeling. It's really, really nice. Okay. Anyway, back to the topic at hand, uh, general reading, but we're starting with Taurus rising. We will be approaching the Taurus rising section of this reading from the true sidereal point of view, not mainstream or astrology. If you are interested, uh, excuse me, not mainstream or tropical astrology. If you are interested in getting a copy of your true sidereal chart, I would be very, very happy to provide that to you. Just send me an email. My email can be found in the description box below. Just let me know you'd like a copy of your chart. I would be very happy to provide that to you free of charge. However, if you would like a an interpretation or you would like to get a reading in terms of that, then that would be charged for. But either way, just send me an email. Let me know that you're interested and I'd be happy to facilitate that for you. With that said, I am available for private readings, which some of the readings that I offer can be found listed in the description box below. Shoot me an email. Let me know you're interested in a reading, whether that be true sidereal astrology or tarot or both. And I would be very happy to facilitate that for you. Yeah. If you are new here, hi, my name is Eric. It is so wonderful to meet you. Please consider subscribing. Yes. Let's go on this journey together. If you have not done so already, please make sure to like, share, and comment. I love hearing from you guys. Smashing that like button helps the YouTube algorithm pick up the video and get this reading and this information and this session out to more people. Let's spread the love, you guys. All right. Um, I believe that's it for the intro. So let's mosey on down. Hey, Taurus. Okay, so Taurus rising here. Um, welcome. It's nice to see you guys again. Welcome back. So we are, I mean, we're definitely picking up where we left off uh, in terms of last month. And that's really, you know, for the coming year, you guys, that's really how this is going to work. Okay, I'm working with the astrology here. I'm focusing on the way the planets are moving through our charts and through the sky. And so there's going to be a much more ease in, there is going to be much more ease in the progression of these stories that we're living through. Yeah, this is not just random arbitrary channeling, as if that's wrong, but okay. So continuing with your story, I'm feeling very compelled to tell you this or to say it this way for you specifically, Taurus, because this is absolutely a continuation of what we were talking about last month, in which I felt like there's great change happening. You may possibly have been in an area of trying to deny or ignore the fact that something needed to change, especially in terms of how you relate to other people, which is similar to Libra. Both of you are ruled by Venus. Both of you have probably been super affected by this Venus retrograde, so that totally makes sense. In terms of your month or your energy this month, the title that I have for you, as you already know, is that things will make a lot more sense uh, very soon. Things will make a lot more sense soon. Um, and so as I was reading through the chart for you, oops, hold on. Let me make sure I have that right. Hold on, because I want to show you the chart now. Just a moment. Okay, I got that settled. Let's look at the chart now, yeah? So this is the chart for Taurus rising for the month of February of 2022. Okay. We're starting on the first, so that doesn't really matter, but I'm going to be talking about how things are moving throughout the month and all that. So as I was looking at the chart for you here, Taurus, um, just like last month, there is a, there is a strong eighth house influence for you. And part of what I was saying last month is that I feel, I feel like well, your title, if you haven't watched the video for last month, I highly recommend that you do so. But the title for last month was. I'd really rather we wouldn't or we didn't, but, and there was a luck, there was a very reluctant energy. There was like this energy of, I was seeing you kind of begrudgingly 
is what I said last month, but now I'm kind of just begrudgingly, reluctantly, whatever, getting up out of your seat or getting up out of some position that you have held for a long time in order to work with the change that is being facilitated by the universe. I'm sorry, I just found something in my shirt that's irritating me. <laughs> anyway, so for you this month, the big message that I got was things that will make a lot more sense soon. And that came from the energy of what's been going on with Mercury. Mercury, as of the 1st of February, Mercury has been retrograde for a while, uh, specifically since about the 14th of January. Mercury goes direct by the 6th of February, like fully stationed direct by the 6th of February, all right? So over the Mercury retrograde period, which for you specifically, Taurus, Mercury started in your ninth house and pulled back, went retrograde back into the eighth house. So there is kind of, for everybody, there's this full feeling that Mercury is kind of pulling us backwards in order to facilitate the change that we've needed, that we've been learning about over this long period of time, specifically with what Uranus has been going through. Um, Uranus, as of February 1st, Uranus will be stationed direct, but the Uranus retrograde that has been happening in Aries that I've been talking about for months now has really been affecting us and changing the way that we show up or changing the way that we identify within ourselves, right? On top of that, we've had this Venus retrograde, which again, could have really been affecting you pretty heavily, Taurus, because Venus is your ruling planet. But Venus moving retrograde has also been helping to reshape our values, all right? So there's this feeling with Mercury, with the Mercury retrograde that we experienced uh, there's a feeling of kind of pulling us backwards in order to facilitate the change we've been guided to implement or make in our lives. And for you specifically, Taurus, there may have been a lot of con conversations between you and the people around you, people close to you, maybe even specifically the people that you serve somehow. There may have been a lot of conversations during the retrograde, the Mercury, Mercury retrograde, tricky ones at that. However, with that said, it does feel like many resolutions may come out of the conversations or maybe even the difficult talks or the difficult realizations you have had to accept or come to terms with over the Mercury retrograde, okay? And I feel like um, the Sun-Saturn conjunction, which is happening this month of February, in which it feels like Saturn is creating a bit of a roadblock here for us in February to say you're not going to be able to move forward until these changes have been made, all right? Um, and so I feel like the Mercury, I'm sorry, the Sun-Saturn conjunction that happens fairly early in the month is kind of setting up that position for you to really, it's, it's that roadblock to get you to really put something new into practice so that you can move forward um, into a higher uh, vibration or a higher, uh, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A, a higherly, a higher vibrational alignment, okay? And and this is very specific, okay? This, this alignment that we as individuals or as a collective are moving to requires a certain energetic vibration. And Saturn is not standing here putting this roadblock in front of us arbitrarily or just because he wants to be some sort of asshole. He's doing it because where we're going, what we're trying to reach, what we're reaching for, what we're trying to transition to requires a higher alignment. And in order to reach that higher alignment, you have to take certain steps to facilitate that alignment, uh, um, uh, uh, getting, uh, uh, facilitate that alignment happening. Okay. So the sun Saturn conjunction may be the start of this as right when sun, the sun and Saturn conjunct in February, Mercury is starting to station direct, okay? So over the retrograde period, we have a moment, like I said in the Mercury retrograde video uh, live stream, if you, haven't, if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check it out because it's very informative. It helps us understand what this Mercury retrograde period time period has for us or what the potential is there. And the title for that has been, or is, yes, and has been, uh, a time to rewrite the code. So just as Mercury is starting to station direct, the sun conjuncts with Saturn, which happens once a year, okay. But it's very important at this time because like I said, Saturn is creating a roadblock to facilitate the changes that need to be made so that later on in March, when the sun reaches or conjuncts with Pluto, I'm sorry, not Pluto, with uh, Jupiter, okay, that's in March, 
there it seems to be some sort of level of expansion or reward or payoff in terms of the changes that we've implemented. But that happens, Taurus, because we have reached a vibrational alignment that allows us to benefit from the expansion that Jupiter will be bringing down the road. But that's why Saturn is standing in the way right now and being like, no, you can't move forward until you make some sort of change. Okay. Now, with that said, Taurus, the Saturn uh, Sun conjunction, there's still a feeling of reluctancy to get out of your seat in order to move forward somehow. There is a strong feeling of a change in your career and or public image. And that is because of the energies that we have within the 10th house for you, those being Jupiter and Neptune. We just spoke of Jupiter. We're going to talk about Neptune in a few moments. Okay. So whereas the Sun Saturn conjunction is like a checkpoint. Okay. The Sun Jupiter conjunction later in March is that payoff or that reward, or at least it feels like. Now, there, uh, there are a number of things that I want to get into, but also I was shuffling for you here, Taurus, and I got a bunch of cards. So I want to read through these before I move forward. Okay. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck for you right now. And Taurus, keep in mind that these cards came out while I was talking about, you know, the difficulty you may be facing or the real universal need for you to get up out of some sort of rooted position or somewhere, somewhere you've been very stable in for a long time. Get up out of that and move forward to something new, which then brings me back to January where the, part of the message was... And this is why part of the reason why I feel like this is connected to your interpersonal relationships, other than some of the aspects also that are visible within the chart for you. Again, I'll get into that in a second. But part of the message for January was if you're going to be of service to people or if you're going to be doing this, whatever this is for you, you have to take into account what those individuals need. You cannot arbitrarily even though it may not seem arbitrary, maybe you have a level of conditioning or there's a level of tradition, status quo, or what, what not, whatever, the Hierophant energies, which does represent Taurus, even though there may be some sort of conditioning or social norm that you are holding to that says to you, no, we need to keep this in place. You have to come to the realization, you have to accept Taurus that nothing is really one size fits all much like the Hierophant would want or the Hierophant says things should be. We are not cookie cutter here. We are not one size fits all. Yes, there are a bunch of things that could benefit the collective as a whole, but if you're really going to work with people on an effective way or relate to people in an effective way, you kind of have to, you not kind of, you have to take into account their reality, their truth. You can't just step into someone's life and say, this is how it is, so this is how it's going to be when that doesn't necessarily resonate for everybody, okay? So with that said, Taurus, overall energy here in terms of making this change for you right now, you do have the Empress. And then underneath that is the Queen of Pentacles. And then underneath that is the Wheel of Fortune. There's another card that I'm gonna mention, but we'll get there in a second. First of all, Taurus, the Empress officially represents you, um, but also the Queen of Pentacles represents you. So I definitely feel like you're in a service-oriented position, whether that be public service or whether that be just in service of your friends or, and family or the people closest to you, okay? And there is a change in alignment for you here, literally 100%. The Empress to the Queen of Pentacles, then to the Wheel of Fortune. There is a change in this alignment in terms of your service, the way that you are providing to people, the way that you are nurturing people, whatnot, whatever. The Queen of Pentacles energy, which is very Capricorn, would represent the element of sticking with some sort of status quo. She doesn't always represent that, but in this situation, she does. She loves and she nurtures people, but in this situation, she feels very one size, uh, one size fits all or very one-sided, okay? There's no real ability for there to be some sort of dem democratic uh, uh, conversation about how we can move forward. On the other hand, the Empress represents that unconditionally loving energy that is so loving and nurturing unconditionally that she sometimes can be enabling, okay? But in this situation, Taurus, she feels like, the Empress feels like that energy that says, that comes to her 
children or those that she's trying to nurture and help grow. She directly speaks to them and says, okay, darling, what do you need? She observes the individual and tailors her care program to them specifically. Each individual seedling, we'll call them, okay? And that's what I feel like this shift is creating for you. The shift in your motherly nurturing, even if you're a man, even if you're masculine, it doesn't matter. We're just talking about energy, okay? So just take it as it resonates. But there's a, there's a, there's a shift that's happening for you in this Queen of Pentacles energy that's getting you into a more unconditionally loving and unconditionally accepting energy that's creating a big change for you, Taurus, the Wheel of Fortune. But in order to facilitate this change or in order to allow this change to take shape and take place in your life, Taurus, you have got to walk away from something. Eight of Cups. All of this is on the bottom of the deck here, okay? Let's talk about the cards that have officially come out on the table here for you. You have the Four of Swords, the Four of Wands, the Six of Swords, okay? This literally speaks to you needing to think about what your foundation is, or at least I'm hearing what your foundation has been, four of swords, four of wands, and figure out a way to move forward. What can you leave behind? What is no longer necessary to hold on to in within this foundation, Taurus? Okay, be very objective about that. You have to be as objective as possible with that, Taurus, because it's really, I understand, I understand that you kind of pride yourself or you, you um, there, there's a feeling here of, your sense of identity being very much wrapped up in what it is you identify with the values that you hold okay this is where you derive for some of you or for someone specifically this is a this is a big part of where you derive your sense of self from but you have to humble yourself there a little bit. You have to kind of take your pride and your, e not kind of, you have to take your pride and your ego out of the situation if you're really going to be as caring and nurturing for people as you possibly can. So you really have to stop Four of Swords and really get very clear on what about this foundation needs to be reshaped or reworked. Take your emotions out of it. Very Aquarian energy, very Aquarian energy, which... Interestingly enough, let me go back to the chart really quick. But with this conjunction between the Sun and Saturn here that's happening in the month of February, I was channeling I, I was channeling about it. I was feeling through the energies and I got this in, this feeling from Saturn that he was like very hell-bent on change, which is not typically what we would expect from Saturn. But when you think about it, Saturn not only rules Capricorn, which is where he is currently right now, all right, and will be throughout the month of February, but Saturn also rules Aquarius. And I was getting a very Aquarian energy from Saturn in this situation because Aquarius is all about liberation, technology, technological advancement, freedom, and also being of service to people, okay, but and which is very similar to Virgo and the sixth house, but the difference between Aquarius and the 11th house and Virgo and the sixth house is that Aquarius is the unemotional type to be objective, king of swords, what which he is represented by in the tarot, king of swords, to take all of the information into account and then to do something about that on behalf of everyone involved. Virgo is the type of energy to look at you and say, well, this is how it's always been done, or this is the process here, this is what we're gonna do. Aquarius is a little more free with that, okay? Also, Aquarius is, is associated with Uranus. And this is where I was really getting that strong Aquarian feel from Saturn, because as Saturn is here, in the, for you, Taurus, in the ninth house, about to conjunct with the sun, Saturn also has a square going on right now, which you can see in one of these lines down here. It's not an exact square, but Saturn has a square with Uranus, which has been driving great change within our sense of selves. Yes. So that's where that Uranian influence comes into play here. And that's where you really have to take your emotions and your sense of pride out of this, Taurus because it's really not about you. It's really not the, about the traditions. It's really not about what we've up, upheld for so long. It's more about really catering our services 
to those who need it in ways that are specific to them. Okay? So, four of swords, four of wands, six of swords. You have to get very clear on how you can move forward. What it is you need to leave behind. What it is you need to walk away on. Okay? Next, with that, last two cards here, you do have the fool and the queen of wands. And this feels very strongly like encouragement to take a chance on that new alignment. Go ahead and be foolish, Taurus. So that's literally what I just heard. Some of you might be looking at this change that is being presented to you right now and thinking that is ridiculously foolish. Like, why would I ever do something like that? Well, here's an answer for you, Taurus. Society doesn't know everything. Institutions don't know everything. The status quo knows nothing. All right, let's continue. So I want to talk now about why this feels so interpersonal for you. Uh, first of all, let's start with Mars. Mars and Neptune. Mars is here currently as of the 1st of February for you, Taurus. Mars is officially in your 8th house. Uh, Neptune is in your 10th house up here. Now, Mars had a tricky month in January because Mars cre went through this semi-square. I, I don't think it's an exact square, but it went through enough of an energetic uh, 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 aspect in the form of a square with Neptune to really bring up some deep, deep stuff. And for you, Taurus... Uh, Mars started in your seventh house and by February 1st will be fairly well into your first, or I'm sorry, your eighth house. And so as Mars, which was mainly in Ophiuchus during the time of this square, which Mars, as Mars was passing through Ophiuchus, there has been a ton of of healing energy involved with Mars energy, the masculine side of things. I'm not going to go too deep into this, but there is a video on my channel here that I released that does talk about the square between Mars and Neptune. It is on my channel. It's called um, Shadows of Efforts Past. Okay, check that out. That gives pretty deep insight into what this, this square between Mars and Neptune has been. But for you specifically, Taurus, Mars was in your seventh house. This is your house of interpersonal relationships. And with this square, Neptune really opened up a lot of doorways, a lot of pathways to get down underneath the surface, deep, deep, deep into our subconscious. And because of that, a lot of fears came up, a lot of past circumstances that you're really not proud of came up. And for you specifically, Taurus, I feel like a lot, you, this created uh, a lot of realization this is very specific, but um, and take it as it resonates. But what I'm feeling very specifically for you, Taurus, is that this created a, a revelation in terms of how your actions may have been misguided and may have actually been detrimental to people in the past. It's not bad. We're not taking Taurus. Please do not take that and run amok with it. Okay, we're not saying that you're a bad person. There have absolutely been perfectly understandable reasons in the past as to why that may have happened. They still could be perfectly understandable now. But the point, the fact of the matter is the universe is trying to get us to change things. Okay? So that's the first point of interpersonal relationships for you. The second point has been Uranus, which is in the 12th house for you, Taurus, which is the house all about the collective. Whereas 11th, the 11th house is also about the collective. Uh, the 12th house is about the spiritual side of the collective. The 12th house is often referred to as the house of God. And with Uranus having been retrograde for us in Aries, for you specifically, Taurus, this was in your 12th house. Again, this could have been another point of where you started to realize how your personal alignment could not have been tr the best place for you to be approaching the collective. Again, Taurus, I don't want you to beat yourself up about that because even specifically now that I'm talking through that, Taurus, again, it feels like there were very solid or practical reasons, very real reasons why you may have done it that way. Please don't beat yourself up about this, okay? Now, another point 
of this interpersonal situation. And this is where I feel like the big, uh, a big focus is for you right now. It's the 10th house. Like I said earlier, you do have Jupiter here in your 10th house. The sun is going to conjunct with Jupiter in March, which is kind of bringing in energies of some sort of payoff. But then also you have Neptune in the 10th house where, like I said, Mars was squaring up with Neptune, right? That was bringing deep, dark fears up or deep past situations up into the surface, right? Like literally digging them up out of nowhere <laughs> in some cases. But with Neptune being in your 10th house and also Mars having been through your 7th house, again, this is all about your interpersonal relationships. Specifically with Neptune being in the 10th house, this is how people see you. This is the public's perception of you. It's also your career, the house of your career. So some there's a big change in public alignment and your perception on behalf of other people, like how other people perceive you. But this also could be representing a change in your career as well, okay? And then finally, you do have Chiron in the 11th. Chiron is the wounded healer. I just feel like, I mean, it's not... It's not too active, Chiron, right now, even though actually, as of the 1st of February, there is a square, a bit of a square happening between Chiron and Venus and Mars, okay? Um, but I really feel like Chiron is just really helping us heal, is helping facilitate healing. And the 11th house for you, Taurus, is Aryan energy, not Aryan energy, excuse me, Aquarian energy, but it's also the house of your groups. The types of groups you align with, your social environment. I mean, trivially speaking, it could be the types of groups that you align with on social media. Like what groups are you a part of on Facebook, right? That's your 11th house, okay? And there's healing that's happening here. I am picking up that some of you specifically are healers and you're switching from the... Um, uh, Western medicine approach to a more holistic and um, natural healing method. Because it is, in fact, you're finding, Taurus, you're finding that, specifically speaking, that is a lot better for people. Why? Because it focuses on preventative medicine and it takes into account the organicness of the body. And Taurus, you are all about the body, okay? <laughs> and the health and wellness of the body, right? All right. What do we have here for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's it for my notes. Yeah, that's it for my notes. So um, I'm going to move forward to just doing some uh, a card pull for you here, Taurus. And I, I do have a little bit of something so far. You have the devil here with the knight of pentacles. I don't necessarily know what I, if I like this, Taurus, because this kind of feels like you... Okay, okay, for some of you here, Taurus, this literally feels like you have no choice but to move forward in the direction that you've been moving forward in for so long. The devil here. The devil with the knight of pentacles. What is this? What can you say, Taurus? Yeah, okay. And then overall energy at the bottom of the, de of the deck is the Four of Pentacles. Um, Taurus, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't feel or hear anything here saying to you, this is the, the way it has to be done. I think you are making that decision or you are putting that stipulation into the process because of your own sense of pride. Don't shoot the messenger. You're holding on to something needlessly, Taurus. Four of Pentacles. Maybe it's more Maybe the devil. What? Okay, well, there's that. Yeah. The Six of Cups. Why? Oh, shit. Anything else? Yes, 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 okay. Just a moment. Holy moly. Okay. So, uh, this, part of, this part of the reading started with the Devil and the Knight of Pentacles, right? 
you feeling trapped in a sort of way. I literally, I just heard that. You feeling trapped in a sort of way. But the thing about the devil, Taurus, is that the devil only has power over us if we continue to give that power to him, okay? The devil can't come in and just take something from you without you giving some sort of level of consent. That's a tricky, that's a tricky topic of conversation. That's something we need to unpack in a different session, all right? But that's the general gist of it, right? Okay, with that Taurus, I, I was trying to get some clarification and I focused on the devil and I said, okay, what is this devil? The Six of Cups came out. And when I, when this came out, I heard tradition. And I was like, yeah, okay, that makes perfect sense. And if you heard, then when that, when that happened, I said, okay, but why? There's the Hierophant. The Hierophant represents the tradition, but the Hierophant is in reversed. Uh, I'm sorry, is in reverse. And what this is saying to me, Taurus, is that whatever tradition you're trying to hold up here is old and outdated. You have got to let this go. This is not about upholding tradition. This is about unconditionally loving individuals and working with them, being a team player. Three of Pentacles, Ace of Cups. So with that said, in this, let, let's use this as an example. You're trying to be a healer and you're really trying to work with individuals around you uh, to facilitate certain healing for them. But they are saying to you, I am not taking X, Y, and Z. I wanna go a more natural approach. And you're saying to them, you're digging your heels in and saying to them, but this is a proven approach. Like it is proven. There is all kinds of scientific data behind this, that this works. And the person says to you, "Is there? where's the scientific data around the natural aspects? Oh, well, that just doesn't exist. So in essence, I'm not technically allowed to prescribe that to you. And the patient says, well, I guess I'll find another doctor then. That's just an analogy. I'm not saying that that's actually happening for you. Although for some of you, it might be. This is not, if you really want to heal people, because I do feel like I'm talking to healers here, which makes sense because progressively speaking, I said this to you last month, but progressively speaking in the sidereal system, my son has progressed from Aries into Taurus. And you can still, you can still use the wisdom and the knowledge that you have gained over all this time. We're not asking you to throw that out, but what we are saying is that you need to be able to tailor that to the individuals you wish to serve. Now, and I actually wanted to say this to you, so I'm glad this came up because I remember talking, mentioning this last month and recognizing and explaining to you guys how this actually does resonate with me a lot as my, in the sidereal chart, my, my son, my natal son has progressed in terms of my progressed chart. My natal son is now in Taurus and I'm feeling this push and this drive to really work with, with uh, sidereal astrology. And that's not popular. It's actually a cop topic of contention with a lot of people. But the universe is really driving me to do this, right? So in order to do that, I'm working with sidereal astrology, okay? But I'm also catering to the people that are not quite ready for that yet or that don't really resonate with that yet. And so that's why we have two sections to this reading. The first half of this reading solely, strictly presents sidereal astrology. But the second half of the reading is non-denominational. It's just a big channeled message for the uh, energy of Taurus, regardless as to what system that you work with. So I am standing in my alignment of the universe saying, hey, we need to get this information out here. And the Taurus, fixed Taurus energy within me is like, are you serious? Ain't nobody gonna listen to this shit. Like, why would I do that? We gotta keep with, we gotta keep with tradition here. We gotta keep with tradition here, spirit. And, do, and use tropical or mainstream astrology. That's the only way we're gonna get people to pay attention to us. And the universe stands up and says, malarkey. This is what we need from you. Three of Pentacles, Ace of Cups. You can tailor this to whomever you want, however you want it. Just make sure that includes sidereal astrology. All right, Taurus, uh, for spirit. All right, all right, cool. I got you, <laughs> right? Finally, though, you have the two of swords with the page of swords. Taurus, there is a level of refusing to learn anything new, to seek a new way forward. 
And this all has to do with how you are nurturing the people around you. At the bottom of the deck, we are back to the Queen of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, and then you have the Three of Wands. All right, so the Queen of Pentacles, again, represents that loving, nurturing energy. The Three of Wands, I'm sorry, the Three of Cups represents the community around you. The Three of Wands represents the path ahead, what it is you've been working towards, your your the momentum that you've got, but then underneath that is the Seven of Swords. There is something deceptive about it. And you're needing to change your alignment, Page of Wands. All right? So um, I understand that I was talking a lot about this change, but really the title for you this month, Taurus, is things will make a lot more sense soon. And it feels like that happens because as you move forward, as you really start to implement the changes that the universe, spirit, your people around you are guiding you towards, as you keep moving forward with that, things will start to line up. Things will start to add up. You will start to see why spirit or whomever was guiding you in this way, okay? It may not make sense to you right now, but you just gotta go along with it, all right? This is, this is not just, we're not, this is not happening to us because, you know, it's some new mainstream thing or it's like the new thing in pop culture. I know sometimes like, I don't know. I feel like Taurus energy can just get completely disgusted by, by pop culture. Okay, I get that. But this is actually a universal change that's being facilitated, okay? And if you're going to listen to anybody here, Taurus, listen to the universe. Because they have a much more expanded view than we do consciously in this 3D environment. Yeah? All right, Taurus. I'm going to close out this section of the reading for you with some oracle guidance from the magic of the unicorn oracle. Yeah? Three shuffles here. One. Two. Three. All right. Closing oracle guidance for my four ends. Hold on, I have to pause for a second. So what you have here for your closing oracle guidance is overall energy, card number 40, Stargate of Lyra. Expand your causal chakra. Enter the unicorn kingdom. And I had to pause for a second because I was not, I didn't remember off the top of my head what the causal chakra was. And I looked, uh, I looked it up really quickly. And just from a quick you know, Google search here. The expanded causal chakra is connected to the moon and is like your own personal moon, absorbing and radiating divine feminine light. Um, this raises your vibration and illuminates the deep feminine wisdom with it, held within your soul. Again, that was just from a quick Google search. And that perfectly aligns with the divine feminine that actually came out for you in the Empress, all right? This is being loving and nurturing to all individuals and catering to them. I'm not saying break your back, Taurus, to, and go out of your, completely out of your way to cater something to them, but you at least have to take their individuality more into account, right? Okay. Finally, you have card number 43, enlightenment. Look from the highest perspective. See the divine in everyone, which again speaks to the uniqueness and the individual individualistic expression of everybody don't go looking at someone saying well i have the degree i have the expertise i have the know-how and you don't so obviously you don't know what you're talking about if someone here is saying to you i need this i need to go in this direction i want to express this i want to i want to explore this i want to try this option i want to try this treatment it is not beneficial for you to stand in your rooted place and say, you don't know what you're talking about because you don't know have the expertise. If this is coming out of this individual, it's coming from a place of higher awareness or higher wisdom. Even if they don't have the, the degree or the thousands of pages, pages of research to prove it, 
if their intuitions are calling for something, then that is relevant to that individual. And you would, it, you, it, it would behoove you. You would do well to listen to them. Okay. All right, Taurus, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to pause now. I'm going to reset. And then we're going to get into the big old general collective side of this reading. Yes, which is non-denominational. Excellent. Stay tuned. Hey there, Taurus. All right, guys. So welcome to the second half of this reading. Yes, this is the non-denominational side of this reading. So regardless as to whichever form of astrology you practice or align with, this is just a big old general energetic pull, card pull for the sign of Taurus. So this would be for Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus potentially, or any other planetary placement you have within Taurus, or any area of your life in which Taurus has an effect that you're curious about. Also, this could be be most relevant with a cross watcher. Yeah. So if you're cross watching for a Tauren, this most likely will resonate or well, this might resonate with you more likely than anything else. Whatever. Let's move forward, Taurus. I'm going to start with the Tarot here. I'm going to give this five shuffles for you and we'll see what messages we have for you this month. Yes. Here we go. This is one for my Taurens. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or anything else that is applicable here is two. What messages do we have for the sign of Taurus, please, Spirit, for the month of February of 2022? This is three. This is four. And this is five. All right, Taurus. What messages, what messages do we have for Taurus? The spirit, the February, what's going on for Taurus? Okay, Taurus. First card that came out, well, three cards came out for you. The first card came out face down. The last two came out face up. The first card to come out face up is the hanged man. Yes, this makes very much sense. Taurus, you're feeling like a, you're feeling caught between a rock and a hard place right now is what I'm hearing. With that hanged man, you do have the two of pentacles. I do feel like I do feel like you're trying. You're trying to find a balance here. For so, ooh, wow, download. For some of you, for some of you it's that you're weighing your options trying to figure out which way would be best. Do we keep up with the status quo or do we make some changes? However, most of the struggle that you are experiencing with this, because the hanged man can be a bit of a challenging energy. Uh, the most of the struggle that you're feeling facing with this has to do with a sense of mental imprisonment. Overall energy is the eight of swords. Um, now the hero, not, I'm sorry, the hanged man can be a fairly difficult and challenging energy to work with, especially for us fixed sign, because us fixed signs don't like change. Uh, most humans don't like change, but mostly fixed signs deal with it the worst or have a, a, sh uh, a more difficult time dealing with change. What happens when the hanged man comes around is you are literally forced to stay in the position that you are in until you can gain some sense of enlightenment or until you can see the situation from a different point of view. And again, this is not arbitrary. This is not the universe coming through and doing this for you, doing this to you for shits and giggles just to make you suffer. No, there is always a reason for this. And what I'm feeling here with the hanged man for you right now, Taurus, is that you have to be able to see this from a different point of view in order to make this change. And this is why you may be struggling so much with trying to find the balance here. And if that's the case, it's because you're trying to approach this new situation from an old and outdated point of view that you are needing to gain a different perspective on now. That's why you're struggling with this so much. And that's why you're experiencing a level of mental prison and mental imprisonment here with the Eight of Swords. However, this feels like your key out of this imprisonment. Underneath the Eight of Swords is the Nine of Pentacles to the Page of Wands. 
to the three of wands, okay, to the six of pentacles. In order for you, Taurus, to really move forward in the new direction or the path we have ahead of us in a balanced and reciprocal way, you have to come out of this sense of mental imprisonment, eight of swords, stand up and be a free thinker, an independent thinker, nine of pentacles, and change your alignment, page of wands. Allow a new message to come through. Allow a new creative path forward or a new path forward that allows for greater creativity to flow in order for you to move into the a better alignment with the path you have ahead of you. A better, even a better alignment in terms of the momentum you've already built. That could really be the struggle for you also. You have built a certain momentum up until now, three of wands, but now all of a sudden the universe or situations are coming to you saying, we've got to change this. And with the fixed energy that you are so strongly aligned with, this is a topic of contention. And this is where and why you might be saying to yourself, okay, how do I, how do I find the balance? And yet in the old way of thinking that you are approaching this from, there is no way to balance this out because balancing this out requires a change in perspective. Now, last card here we have for you so far, which was the first card that came out, but it came out face down. So it's energies underneath the surface. <laughs> it's the star. Yeah. So this is why this change is such a topic of contention for you, Taurus, because you have no idea how this is going to move you forward. And in terms of that momentum that you feel that you've already built up, this change that you're being required to make looks like, feels like, I guess, a threat to that momentum, but it's not. It's actually facilitating greater momentum is what I just heard. But the thing about the star is this, the star represents healing. Um, so first of all, let me say that in the Taurus rising part of the situation, I was picking up on energies of healers, okay? So I do feel like I'm speaking to certain healing or healers here. So if you're gonna try and heal people, this is your card, right? But the other type of the situation or the other branch of the situation is the unknown aspect of the star. You don't know how you're going to get there. You don't even know why you're going to get there. You may not even know why you're being called on this path. You can't really see ahead of you. All you see is that one beacon of light that's lovingly coaxing you in a certain direction. And that is a topic of contention for you, Taurus, and I get it. I get it. Like I said last month, and like I said earlier in the, the reading this month, in terms of my progressed chart, which if you're interested in that, not just your sidereal birth chart, but also your progressed chart, let me know. I'd love to dive into that for you. Send me an email, yeah? Information can be found in the description box below. But in terms of my progressed chart, my natal sun, which was in Aries, has now progressed into Taurus. And this is very much aligning with me in making the official switch into focusing the, the, the messages and the channeling that I do here on my channel from the true sidereal point of view. The traditionalist Taurus energy within me is looking up at the, at the universe and screaming, this is absolute malarkey. Ain't nobody gonna listen to us if we're talking about sidereal, point, sidereal astrology. Obviously that's not true because there are plenty of people out in the world that are really starting to get into alignment with this. But the current climate, the way it looks, it's like, and with some of the flack or the pushback or the kickback that I've gotten personally and I've just experienced out there in terms of shifting from mainstream astrology to, to sidereal astrology, my Taurus son right now, my progressed Taurus son is like, you've got to be shitting me. You want me to do what? I spent four years building this channel and now all of a sudden you want me to officially switch to sidereal astrology, which people are so angry with? Yes, Eric, because that's what the universe is calling for. That's where we actually are in terms of the, the, the celestial body. So what's the big problem here? What's the big contention? What's the big contention spirit? I don't know where this is gonna lead us. This could completely destroy my business. But it's not going to. Let's talk a little bit more about this star energy for you. Yeah, Taurus. What's the star here for Taurus? What advice do you have for Taurus? Oh, 
great change, Taurus. Anything else for the spark? Yeah. Great change, Taurus, is up ahead, is in store. The first card out to clarify the star is the Wheel of Fortune. Now, yes, we understand that there's going to be some sorrow here. You're going to be experiencing some loss. Some things are going to fall by the wayside. And using my personal uh, 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 life as an example here, my personal experience, yes, I have lost a lot of people over this time period of me really settling into sidereal astrology practice here on my channel and not ping-ponging between mainstream and sidereal. No, pick one. Okay, I chose. And yes, I lost a lot of people because of it. But quite frankly, the people that I lost because of this switch are just not in alignment with it, are just not resonating with it, are just not ready to follow this lead. And that is okay. But all is not lost here. Two of cups behind those three that have spilled out. All is not lost. All will never be lost is what I'm hearing, especially when the universe is guiding you here. And you know this is not your ego guiding you because your ego is like, absolutely not. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is suicide. Maybe to your ego, yeah. Oh, yeah. But when the universe is guiding you here, yes, there are going to be some things that are lost, but there are also going to be some things that are gained to take the place of that which was lost. So you have to go through this period, Taurus. You have to go through this period of mourning. You have to go through this period of people falling off or people falling out of alignment with you. That is okay. There is nothing wrong with those people. Please do not demonize those people because they're doing what they feel is best for them. And that is perfectly understandable and acceptable. You have to allow yourself to go through this period of things dying out or people falling away or losing certain connections, whatnot, whatever, because you are working with the alignment that is being facilitated within you, all right? Overall energy here is the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups also to the Ace of Wands, but the Queen of Cups here just... The Queen of Cups is saying for you, Taurus, focus on your feelings. How do you truly feel about it? Because I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like whatever new path, new direction, whatever Ace of Wands that you are, that you are influenced towards, I feel like actually there's a great deal of excitement there. I feel like on a, on a true level here, this feels, emotionally, this feels right. But it feels that way because it doesn't feel like there's resistance in the new path. The resistance is within you trying to hold to the old path. So focus on that, Taurus. And be like, be honest with yourself about that. Like, be really, truly honest and objective. I understand change is scary. I understand that, but change is also good and necessary. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for Taurus here? Closing guidance. Anything else for Taurus? Anything else you want to say to Taurus at this moment, please, Spirit? Okay. The hermit came out here, and this is definitely speaking to my healers, all right? If you really resonate on that healing vibe, this is speaking to you. And what I'm hearing here, Taurus, is lead the way. Lead the way. Because quite frankly, the, the, the star that is in the hermit's lantern here is the same star on this card. You have the vision. You have the power to lead people through this process if you just allow yourself to do so. More specifically, if you allow your inner light to guide the way, to illuminate the way forward. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck, Taurus, is the magician to the Three of Pentacles. You have the ability to lead the way and build this new structure. 
but you are reluctant to do so. And there is such a blessing that's going to come from this four of, pen four of Cups to the Ace of Pentacles. The Four of Cups would be that reluctance to do it. The Ace of Pentacles is the new opportunity, the new lucrative opportunity, actually, that I'm hearing that is being handed to you. There is so much benefit that could come from this if you just allow yourself to get into that alignment, Queen of Wands, and stop fighting against it, Knight of Swords, okay? Because this really is about being reciprocal and, and catering, tailoring things to people in a way that's not one size fits all any longer. That is the path ahead. And that is how you really have got to change your alignment and stand on your own all the way back to all this stuff. Six of Pentacles, Three of Wands, Page of Wands, Nine of Pentacles. Okay? All right, Taurus. Let's get your closing oracle guidance. We're going to go with the oracle of the seven energies here. Five shuffles. This is one. Two. Three. <laughs> this is four. And this is five. All right, so I already have a card here for you, Taurus, but I I want to get one more. It's the official shuffle here, yeah? What, and here it is right there. Ah, uh, yes. Card number 37 is at the bottom of the deck, the Oracle's Gift. This to me feels very Ace of Cupsy, right? Um, what I was saying, what I, what I, I was saying something in the, uh, Taurus rising part of the video of like, if you have someone that's coming to you saying that they just feel like they've got to do this certain approach or something like that. And you're standing in your traditionalism saying, no, that's not appropriate. Or there's no science behind that. Or there's no data behind that. Blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. Everybody has their own personal Oracle called their intuition and if their intuition is calling for something new and or different then it would be, be it would behoove you taurus to honor that okay so the first card oh my god i just noticed this the first card that came out for you here that came that was coming out of the deck while i was shuffling and spirit said to take it is card number 11 in perfect harmony so whatever it is you're being influenced or guided to change or move forward with, it is in perfect harmony with the universe. The universe, Taurus. Not just the earth realm, the whole entire universe that we are all a part of. Even though down here in this three-dimensional reality, it's very easy to lose track or lose sight of that. Last card you have here is card number 10. So the, the, the succession, 11 and 10, yes? But you have close encounters. And I don't do this often with this deck, but I'm being guided to read some of this from the book. So hold on. 